I think Shroud doesn't want necessarily to have to stream uh, a bazillion hours on Twitch to maintain his income level. If you, what, let's say that Shroud said that uh, his contract was, uh, that he wouldn't accept anything under $50 million to go to, to go to Mixer. He said that on his stream. I don't, I, I can't t say what the amount is, but let's say it's even half that. Let's say it's 25 million total for two or three years, right? 25 million to a guy that plays Apex Legends and is good at it is a pretty good deal. What the hell is going on? Why are all these streamers moving to Mixer? Why do you think they are? Well, the answer that everyone's going to give you is money, right? But it's not that simple. Um, money is a factor. But the big reason that people are moving to Mixer is actually something that one of the big brains who's becoming increasingly interested in our industry pointed out a couple of days ago. And if you watched my video on it on youtube.com slash Devin Nash, link down below. You will uh, see, wait, you're already on YouTube if you're listening to this. Uh-oh. Unless you're listening to it live, then you're not. Links in chat. Got him. Okay. Mark Cuban pointed out, which is that uh, money is actually not the only factor in these decisions. Most of these people are making a ton of money anyway. The, um, in fact, there's a pretty sound argument that if they continued on Twitch and they wanted to stream they would actually make more money than the Mixer deals. So uh, I, I have, this is kind of a delicate subject because I actually know how much these guys make, but um, clearing several million a year for a streamer of Shroud's size is not abnormal. So a multi-million dollar contract that spans two to three years on a platform like Mixer is competitive, but they're going to get the money either way. So what is it that a contract with Mixer is that appeals to these big streamers rather than just the money. Because they're making a ton of money anyway, right? And I will tell you what that is. It's something that Mark Cuban identified and that we identified in our earlier video. When Mark Cuban had his tweet, which we really should have put in the link, and I can't believe I didn't do that, but I, wrote a, I, I did a, a, a video about why Mark Cuban thinks that streaming is a waste of time. And uh, he said... Look at the number of hours streamed per day versus the number of hours in the day and ask why you'd want the, that job. And uh, I, I impact, this is this 20 minute video is like me impacting that, okay? So if we actually think about what he said here, there and we start to get the real reason why people like Ninja and Shroud are leaving. It's a time thing. So Ninja doesn't wanna be streaming 12 to 16 hours a day. Okay, what he wants to be doing in his case is he's trying to move more towards being a sort of celebrity. So he wants to, that's why you see him on the, uh, the ice cream when he was singing the song or whatever. I don't know what you call that, the, the star show. He is going on um, late night talk shows. He's increasingly becoming sort of like a gaming celebrity. And he's bridging that gap between I'm a gamer that streams on Twitch to like I'm a celebrity. And now he's getting paid in activation fees. He's getting paid in... Um, in appearances, and so it is beneficial to him to take a mixer contract because he doesn't have to stream as much and he still has the security of stable income. So this is something that I think is gonna happen for Shroud as well, but for a different reason. I think Shroud doesn't want necessarily to have to stream uh, a bazillion hours on Twitch to maintain his income level. Shroud streams a pretty insane amount of time on Twitch. Over the last 30 days, uh, Shroud streamed 184 hours. So if we do the math on that, that's six hours a day, but that's seven days a week. So that is well, well beyond a full-time job, right? So that would be, wait, is that right? Six hours a day, seven days a week, 42? Six times seven, am I wrong? So it's only a full-time job. 184 hours, 30 days? Am I missing something? Let me pull up chat. Or am I correct? Divide by 22 days? Oh, oh, that's why I'm dividing by 30 days. Right, we have to divide by, um, we're, we're, we're assuming a 40-hour work week. Correct, okay, yeah. So we have, to, we have to divide by that. Yeah, so it's eight hours of, of work a day, 8.4, 8 um, over a full-time job. So the, um, so the other thing to remember is that like, a lot of this is in these really big blocks, right? So it's not just like 
it's like 10 hours or whatever or, 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 or things like that. So um, it's, it's difficult, right, to uh, stream this much. And this is 28% down that he did last month, probably because he knew that he was going to get the mixer contract, right? So he streamed less, significantly less. So what streamers are getting is money, but they're also ensuring security and stability. If you, what, let's say that Shroud said that uh, his contract was, uh, that he wouldn't accept anything under $50 million to go to, um, to go to Mixer. He said that on his stream. I, don't, I, I can't t say what the amount is, but let's say it's even half that. Let's say it's 25 million total for two or three years, right? 25 million to a guy that plays Apex Legends and is good at it and is, uh, how old is Shroud? Is 25 years old? So a guy that's 25 years old that's gonna clear $25 million before he is 27, right? This is a pretty good deal. Ninja, it, before he's 30, is gonna clear that. So a really big thing to remember here, um, because I think we're tempted to think of like Shroud or Ninja's move to Mixer as like these permanent huge things. They're really not, dude. They are just beginning their careers. 30 to 40, they have an entire career of being a gaming personality, being a commentator, being a YouTube creator. There are, like, Dr. Disrespect is still in the game in 37. And, 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 like, he's still just kicking it, right? And he started pretty late, like, by in comparison to a lot of these really popular content creators. Shroud is so young. He has so much time. So ensuring a $25 million buyout in, 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 in by the time he's 27... Is, 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 it's a no-brainer, right? Versus, like, if you stay on Twitch, you you um, can't guarantee that's going to happen. I mean, maybe uh, someone else comes along. Maybe, like, your stream starts to lose steam. Probably not when we're talking about the numbers we're talking about, right? So a, a, a wise person can sit back and think about this and be like, it makes a lot of sense to switch to Mixer for a while, secure literally F you money, I mean, I mean, total FU money, which is what $25 million is. And then simultaneously absolutely guarantee that kind of stability. Okay, so, so as far as the psychology of these streamers moving to Mixer, th th that's why this is happening. Okay, so before we ever get into like the industry stuff, I just wanted to cover why Ninja and Shroud and like other people may do this. Um, I'll make another bold prediction here. Okay. You haven't seen the last of people moving places. Okay? All right. So that's that. That's why streamers are doing it. I think that's pretty clear. All right. Next interesting questions. Uh, let's look at what happened to Mixer and Ninja. So Ninja, in terms of earned media actually hasn't decreased. In terms of um, CCUs, concurrent viewers, or number of viewers that watch the stream, decreased a lot, right? And in terms of Mixer's market share, it's actually the same at 3%, I believe. 3%. Okay. So, Ninja's viewers went down a lot the market share of Mixer didn't change, meaning there really isn't a substantial amount of users coming into the site than there was on quarter two, although I would argue that it's probably too soon to really know. Earned media actually hasn't decreased, okay? There's still new, so what do I mean by earned media? What I mean by earned media is how many people are talking about Ninja without him paying for it? In fact, I would actually say from quarter two, actually has increased from Q2 to quarter three. More people are talking about Ninja than they did, than they did a little while ago. Um, in quarter two, beginning of quarter two, before we moved to Mixer, what was happening to Ninja was he was riding the coattails of Fortnite, which was declining, because this was pre-Black Hole update, and he was actually getting talked about less. He, like, he wasn't like the face of Twitch and like the dude, right? He was actually declining a little bit. So his earned media actually increased from quarter two to quarter three. 
his CC his CCUs did decrease, and this is the metric to which most people are judging Ninja. That he has less viewers on Mixer. They should not be judging him this way. They should be judging him by the amount people are talking about him. Because that's where his money actually and opportunity actually lies. Because Ninja can go back to... So, so Ninja's still the most followed person on Twitch. He can go back to Twitch in two, three years or whatever, how long his, client, his contract is. And he can, he can come back and he can get all that back. No problem, right? There's people that have done it before. It could happen. So the most interesting thing... So the, these two discussion points are just interesting, right? We don't really have to care about the number of live viewers that Ninja has. doesn't really matter. And um, the earned media is still up. So it's interesting. The market share not changing, that is really interesting from an industry standpoint. Because it means... It doesn't mean this, but it, it starts to suggest the narrative that maybe it's not the most effective thing to do to buy big streamers and have their audiences come over to your platform. And maybe it won't meaningfully push the needle. If we want to push the needle, we have to see in quarter four that Twitch's market share will decline and that it will give up some of it to Mixer. So maybe by two to 4%, if we saw like a move and Mixer moved to six or 7%, that would be indicative of, of a very successful marketing strategy on, on, on the um, on, on hand of Microsoft. So then, Devin, does it follow that you are of the opinion that um, Mixer is wasting money? No. I think this is a super viable way to test out. It's a super good way to drive users to your, your platform. Um, Let's say that it costs Mixer $25 million to get Shroud for two to three years. Well, let's be specific. Let's say two years. Total arbitrary. Again, I am making up numbers right now. Even if I know the deal amount, I'm purposely not making it close to the deal because I don't want to mess with that. Okay? Microsoft is the most profitable company on earth and cleared 10 billion dollars last quarter okay mixer is the play that microsoft has to dominate the live streaming space so so when we think of live streaming as a medium of communication in the same way that we would think of podcasting or youtube or whatever video written audio live streaming is a met is a is a literal platform of communication meaning that it is a, one of the pillars that uh, um, it's one of the pillars of our of our literal society, right? So, like, um, there are only a few ways in which we can communicate with people, right? I can talk to you, I can show you a video, I can write something to you, and that's pretty much it. Other than that, that's that that's like pretty much it. So, live streaming as a medium and a communication platform is very important to Microsoft's long term business strategy. A twenty five million dollar investment plus whatever they paid for Ninja to get. To corner to have a chance at cornering the live stream market, total drop in the bucket. It's nothing, right? It's absolutely nothing for a chance at three to four percent extra market share. Totally worth it. So I made a video a while back, and I said Ninja's move to Twitch, uh, Ninja leaving Twitch is good for everyone, right? The reason why I said that was because of this principle. It's really not a big deal for Microsoft to make this spend, and it's really not a big deal if it doesn't work. There is enough value in the concept of having a competing platform in the live stream medium that it's important for Microsoft to take these risks. And indeed, they take these risks in tons of other areas, right, in terms of R&D. So they're spending tens of millions of dollars for these things. A really similar analogy is sometimes you'll just see a big VC or a person that owns a sports team just buy an esports team for $10 million. And you'll be like, whoa, how did that happen? Well, the truth is, if that dude is paying a player, a single player, a $50 million contract for a year, is it really that big of a deal that they dropped $10 million to buy an esports team? The difference is perspective. It, it, it seems that way to us because in our industry, $10 million is a lot. But to them, it's nothing. Same thing with Microsoft, right? Them dropping money on streamers, it's nothing. They could buy out um, all the rest of the streamers and uh, it wouldn't even be a drop in the bucket, right? So let's get that out of the way. So I think that part of the set uh, of the um, that part of it 
covers the sort of like let's ha look what happened to Mixer and Twitch and, and Ninja type of thing because I think that's like something that a lot of people have been really interested in and asked me a lot about. And I was hesitant to provide answers on this because I, I didn't know yet until um, there was enough data to play it out. Okay, so now another interesting thing is given that this is not a big deal for Microsoft to do, it's not a big deal for YouTube to do either, by the way, and Google could do the same thing. Not saying they're going to, but maybe they will. Just stay, stay tuned for that, yeah? Okay, so who else is vulnerable? Well, the answer is brand-friendly people. Because what is Microsoft's strategy in all of this? Microsoft wants to differentiate from Twitch by creating a platform of brand accessible individuals and leveraging that for higher advertising rates. That is Mixer's business plan. The reason they got Ninja was because they wanted to leverage Minecraft and Fortnite, two very brand accessible games that are friendly for everybody. And Twitch is currently in a existential cycle of consistently eating its own tail. I say for YouTube. Um, there are a lot more creative ways to say that. Where it can't seem to decide what end is up. And Mixer is taking advantage of that by sniping brand-friendly people, thereby moving Twitch towards ever more towards the world star hip-hop of live streaming, while Mixer maintains a solid marketplace of brand-friendly ideas and streamers which will then affect its advertising rates because brands that know that they can trust Microsoft to give them a brand-friendly experience for their users will advertise with them, which will thereby increase CPMs. So CPMs will go up. So you'll get paid more for advertising with Mixer. Uh, you'll definitely pay more for that experience than you would from Twitch. That is true right now, by the way. I 100% I, I know that Mixer can sell higher CPMs than Twitch can because they can guarantee brand-friendliness because of the... the, the, the um, stringency of their terms of service and the way that they are collecting talent. So what kind of streamers are vulnerable? People like Pokey, people like Tim the Tatman, right? These are people that are in the prime sites of Mixer, right? People like Myth, right? People like Dr. Lupo, People like Co Carnage, Dr. Plupo, right? There you go. So that's who is potentially vulnerable. Understanding the business strategy, understanding that it's not a big deal for Mixer to do, and understanding what the objective of Mixer is, which is all that Mixer wants to do is shave a little bit of this market share off of Twitch. If Mixer even doubles its market share in 2020, they've done a great job. Because somebody needs to solidify themselves against Twitch as a viable competitor in the live streaming space. Spoiler alert, it's going to be YouTube, but Mixer's going to try. And the way that Mixer is going to do this, their current, what we call, content acquisition strategy, CAS, is to acquire users, streamers, and hope that their audiences blend over. Uh, the data, the jury is out on if this is an actual thing or not. Um, I don't know if this is going to be an effective strategy because there's just not enough time to tell. We need probably two or three quarters to figure this out. And I said that with the Ninja thing. What is cool is that this is kind of the first time that Twitch is actually being challenged with this, with this um, Mixer Shroud thing. So, our Ninja Shroud thing. So, Twitch is going to have to do two things. One, they're going to have to pay for streamers. That was what the Nick A... Uh, uh, AO30 thing was. They're going to have to pay for streamers and try to keep talent. Number two, hopefully, they're going to have to take a look at their platform and be like, not only how are we better uh, in terms of what we can pay, but how are we better in terms of the actual experience that we offer our users? Because right now, the experience on Twitch is not that good. So if they think about that, it might force them to improve in a as a business, which is the beauty of competing platforms, right? So, so Mixer may inadvertently force Twitch to make more informed and better decisions about their company if they want to survive, and I'm always a fan of that. 
So that's why when I say that these moves are good for everything, that's what I mean. It's good for uh, Shroud because Shroud gets the benefit of stability and doesn't lose much. He's 27, he's got $25 million. Okay. It's good for Mixer because Mixer has a legitimate chance at pushing into the market and establishing themselves at a low cost relative to themselves. It's good for Twitch because it forces Twitch to compete and it forces them to be better. Um, and it's good for the industry as a whole because it brings more money into the industry, which is always good. It gives more money to streamers, which is always good. And it further legitimizes, legitimizes broadcasting and live streaming as a platform, which is good for everybody. So that's it. It is a really cool thing to see. It's pretty much good for everyone. And I think this was one of the absolute best talks we've had and how we actually broke down this subject and made sense of it. So if you are new to the channel, please toss it a follow on Twitch or a up thing on, on YouTube, whatever you do on this thing, you click the button, click every button that's associated with this channel. This button, this button, except the unsubscribe button, don't click that. Click the subscribe button. Qu